A crane weighing 500 tons stands on a job site. Its task, to lift a bridge segment weighing nearly double that. It's a sight that seems to defy the basic laws of physics, a mechanical paradox playing out in steel and hydraulics. How can a machine lift something so much heavier than itself without toppling over? The answer is a masterful application of leverage, a principle as old as the pyramids. But the very science that grants these machines their incredible power also conceals a vulnerability, an external force that can turn a billion-dollar project into a disaster zone in seconds. And it's a force that no amount of engineering can ever truly eliminate. So, how does that 340-ton machine prepare to lift a 900-ton load? The answer lies in one word. Moments. Not moments in time, but moments of force. It's the same principle that allows you to lift a heavy friend on a seesaw. If they sit close to the pivot point and you sit far away on the other side, your smaller weight can easily balance their larger one. The crane is just a colossal high-stakes seesaw where the pivot point, or fulcrum, is the dead center of the crane's slewing ring. Every load hanging from the boom is trying to tip the crane over. It creates what engineers call a load moment. The formula is simple. Force multiplied by distance. Let's say we have a 50-ton load at a radius of 100 feet from the crane center. The load moment is 50 times 100, which gives us 5,000 foot-tons of tipping moment. To stop the crane from toppling, you need to create an equal or greater moment in the opposite direction. This is the entire job of the counterweight. The counterweights are immense, precisely engineered slabs of concrete or steel that are mounted on the back of the crane's rotating superstructure. Their weight, multiplied by their distance from the fulcrum, creates this stabilizing moment. If those counterweights weigh 200 tons and are positioned 20 feet behind the fulcrum, they create a stabilizing moment of 200 times 25, which is also 5,000 foot-tons. The crane is in perfect equilibrium. This delicate balance is why a crane's lift capacity is a dynamic chart, not a single number. The same crane that can lift 1,000 tons close to its mast might only handle 50 tons when the boom is extended all the way out because the distance in the load moment equation has become so large. Take a true giant like the Liebherr LR11000. Its basic machine weight is around 340 tons, but its full counterweight package can add another 540 tons, bringing the total weight to around 790 tons. This package often includes a suspended superlift tray that hangs far behind the machine, connected by a derrick mast up to 130 feet long. This dramatically increases its distance from the fulcrum, creating an enormous stabilizing moment that allows for truly staggering lifts. The logistics are immense. Dozens of truckloads are required just to transport these counterweights to a job site where they are meticulously assembled piece by piece. But all of this mass, the machine, the counterweights, and the load has to be supported by the ground. We're talking about pressures that can exceed 3,000 pounds per square foot without mitigation. This force is distributed by massive crawler tracks, each with a surface area larger than a family car, often aided by steel mats or compacted ground to prevent the machine from sinking into the earth. Before any major lift, geotechnical engineers spend weeks analyzing the soil, ensuring the ground can handle the immense bearing pressure. It is a complete symphony of calculated forces, turning a machine's own weight into an immovable anchor. But what happens when the enemy isn't the weight on the hook, but the air itself? The engineering principles of leveraging counterweight provide precise, predictable control over a lift. The calculations are based on a closed system of known forces, the weight of the crane, its counterweights, and the load on its hook. But a crane doesn't operate in a closed system. It operates in the real world, where external forces like wind can introduce loads that no chart can account for. The devastating potential of this reality was demonstrated on a cold, blustery morning in Manhattan, February 5, 2016. The machine was a Liebherr LR1300, 
a powerful 300-ton capacity crawler crane operated by one of the most experienced crews in the city. For this job, it was fitted with an approximately 400-foot lattice boom and jib, towering over the surrounding buildings. A lattice boom, unlike a solid hydraulic one, is a complex web of high-strength steel tubing. It's incredibly strong under compression and tension, the primary forces of lifting, but it's torsionally weaker, making it uniquely vulnerable to twisting forces from the side. The crew was well aware of the forecast for high winds, with safety protocols typically halting operations at sustained winds above 20 to 30 miles per hour. They made the correct professional call, cease all lifting operations and secure the crane by lowering the massive boom to the ground. This is a standard but inherently high-risk procedure. As the operator began the slow, deliberate process of booming down, the wind escalated rapidly. Gusts that were forecast at 25 miles per hour suddenly ripped through the urban canyon at over 40 miles per hour. A 400-foot-long lattice structure, even one that looks full of empty space, presents an enormous surface area to a crosswind. It acts like a massive, rigid sail. The seemingly empty spaces in the lattice do little to reduce the aerodynamic force. In fact, they create intense turbulence, adding to the immense and unpredictable pressure pushing on the side of the boom. This created a colossal, unplanned side-load moment a force the crane's design charts could never account for. Investigators would later determine the critical error was in the procedure itself. The boom was being lowered at a low angle, maximizing its exposure, presenting the largest possible profile to the wind. The safe and correct procedure is the opposite, to maintain a much steeper boom angle for as long as possible while bringing it down, acting more like a needle than a sail. The boom should only be lowered to a shallow horizontal angle at the very end of the process, minimizing the time it spends in that vulnerable state. But on that day, with the boom held at a low angle against the force of the wind, the enormous pressure found the weakest point in the steel structure and began to twist it. Steel that could support hundreds of tons in a straight line was being bent sideways. For a few agonizing seconds, the crane fought back. Then, with a sound described by witnesses as a sickening, metallic shriek, the lattice boom experienced catastrophic torsional buckling. The steel twisted, folded, and collapsed. The 400-foot structure slammed down across two city blocks, crushing parked cars and killing a man sitting in his vehicle. Here was the crane's one true weakness, its vulnerability to a force that can't be calculated on a load chart. The brutal lesson led to sweeping new safety regulations in New York City. But rules on paper are one thing, real-time conditions in the sky are another. If human procedure can fail under pressure, what can be trusted to stand as the last line of defense between a safe lift and a catastrophe? That tragic failure underscores a critical point. While the physics of leverage are absolute, the real world is not a controlled environment. This is why the industry has developed an incredible suite of digital guardians to back up the physics and protect against the unpredictable. The most critical component of this brain is the Load Moment Indicator, or LMI. This isn't just a simple warning light. The LMI is a sophisticated computer that constantly calculates the forces acting on the crane. It takes data from sensors on the boom angle, the boom length, and the weight of the load itself. It then compares this live data against the manufacturer's load charts for that specific crane configuration. If the operator tries to lift too much or extend the boom too far for a given weight, the LMI doesn't just sound an alarm, it can actively lock out the controls, preventing a catastrophic overload. It's the digital hand that stops an operator from making a million-dollar mistake. Then you have systems like the anti-two-block device. This is a simple but ingenious safety feature. Two blocking occurs when the hook block is raised until it strikes the boom tip, which can cause the hoisting line to snap, dropping the load. A weighted ring or switch hangs just below the boom tip. If the hook assembly rises too high and lifts it, the switch immediately cuts power to the hoist controls, preventing the collision. And critically, there's the anemometer, 
usually mounted at the highest point of the crane. As we saw in Manhattan, wind is the unseen variable. The anemometer measures its speed in real time, giving the operator the hard data needed to make the call to shut down. These systems don't change the laws of physics, but they create a powerful shield of safety, catching human error and monitoring the environment to ensure a disaster like the one in 2016 doesn't happen again. We started by explaining the simple, elegant physics that allow cranes to lift the impossible. We saw the devastating consequences when those principles are overwhelmed by forces of nature, and we've explored the incredible technology designed to prevent such a disaster. It's a constant interplay between raw power, human judgment, and digital oversight. The goal is always the same, to ensure the laws of physics work for us and never against us. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries, your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.